my name is Annie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about three medieval romances you can read if you want to get started reading in Middle English. Now, I remember in my first medieval literature class, I found reading Middle English very, very intimidating. And I remember being assigned Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and the professor recommended we read it in Middle English. And I got to it and <laughs> I couldn't read it. It was really difficult for me to read it. And as I read more works in Middle English, I realized that depending on when the text was written, it might simply present different spellings of some words, or it might have a very different vocabulary than what we have today. And I also found that the more I read it, the more I got used to the language, it was easier to read those harder texts because you get used to the words, you get used to the spellings. So I found it easier to begin with something that's a bit later, a bit closer to modern English to get used to everything and then move on to those earlier texts. And so today I'm gonna to be recommended three medieval romances that I find have a very accessible middle English to read for someone who wants to get used to the language. And even if you're someone who already knows Middle English, these are very fun romances and I would recommend them to anyone, really. So the first romance I'm going to be talking about is The Squire of Low Degree. And it was written likely in the late 15th century, but there is some debate as to when exactly it was written. So the story, as the title may imply, is about a squire who works in the court of the King of Hungary, and he is of low rank. And he falls in love with a princess. But knowing that he is of a lower status than her, he thinks that his love will forever be unrequited. One day he's sitting under her window lamenting that he will never be with her, and the princess opens the window and hears him. And she tells him that she loves him back. But she also is aware that it would be hard for them to get married given their different social status. So she tasks him with adventuring for seven years doing all sorts of knightly things in order to gain honor and prestige so that he can come back and marry her. So after having made this plan and declared their love for each other, the squire leaves. But they are overheard by an evil steward who goes and tells the king of this scheme of theirs. So I won't say any more so I don't spoil the text, but what follows are lots of misunderstandings and twists and turns, very classically medieval romance. So not only is it very accessible because of the language, but it's also really fun and compelling. And because it has a lot of those common romance tropes, I think it's very easy to follow for someone who's just getting started. The second text that I'm going to be talking about is The Wedding of Sir Gawain and Dame Ragnell. And it was likely written around 1450, and it survives in an early 16th century manuscript. So this is a story that you might recognize, and it's repeated in other versions of The Wedding of Sir Gawain, and it is also basically the same story of Chaucer's Wife of Bath's Tale. So the story opens with Arthur and his knights on a hunt, and Arthur gets separated from the group, and he encounters a knight that claims that Arthur gave all his lands to Sir Gawain and he says that he will have Arthur's life because of that. And Arthur says, isn't there anything I can do to have you not kill me right here? I will give you anything. And the knight says that, all right, I will make a bargain with you. Let's say that in a year you have to meet me here and tell me what women desire the most. So King Arthur says, all right, I will try to find the answer and meet you here in a year. So Arthur goes back to his court and Gawain asks him what happened and he tells Gawain. And they both set out in different directions and ask everyone, men, women, and the children too, <laughs> what is it that women desire above all things? So after a year they come back and they have lots of different answers but no answer that covers them all. So Arthur is getting a bit desperate and he goes out into the forest and he meets a strange lady. And by strange, she is described as the ugliest creature imaginable. Chaucer calls her the Loathly Lady. So she tells Arthur that she knows how to save his life. And if he would grant her one thing that she wants, she will tell him the secret that he needs to know. And Arthur says, all right, what do you want? And she says that she wants to marry Sir Gawain. So I won't say any more. This is a very, very fun story. 
and I hope that you want to find out the ending from this. And it also has a lot of romance tropes like the promise making, the loyalty between knights, the friendship, and the twists and turns. But it also has a linear storyline, it doesn't go off into tangents like some romances do, so it's very easy to follow. And the language is also accessible, so I would highly recommend this romance, it's very fun. So the third romance I will be talking about is Sir Degrafant, and it was written between 1385 and 1410, and it survives in two different manuscripts, both of which are collections of different texts, and these types of manuscripts are fairly common. So I chose this text not only because it has that readable language, but also because it also, like the other two, has the romance tropes all over it. So it's easy to follow if you're just starting. The romance tells the story of, surprise, Sir Degervant, who is a very, very worthy knight of King Arthur's court. And he is given lands and people to take care of, but when he is away fighting in holy wars, his neighbor, the Earl, comes in, hunts in his lands, kills some of his people, and then just goes away. So Sir Degrafant returns to his lands and finds everything messed up. So he goes to this Earl's house and tries to tell him, why were you messing up my lands and hunting in my woods? While the Earl is his enemy, Sir Degrafant sees the Earl's daughter, Meliodor, and immediately falls in love with her. He declares his love for her, but she says, no, I shall not have you. And so we have our classic romance plot of unrequited love between a lady and a knight. So I won't say any more, so I don't spoil the ending, but it's also very fun to read. It's a very linear story, and it has a bit more conflict and fighting if you're into that. So these are the three romances I will recommend today. I think they are very fun reads, and if you want to get started reading Middle English, I think they're an excellent starting point. So a few more tips for reading Middle English. Something that I do a lot is read the text out loud, because some of the words you can't recognize when they're written, but when you say them, it's like, oh, of course it's that word. Something else that I always use is the Middle English Compendium, which is basically a dictionary, but it's online. And if you search a word in Middle English, it will give you all the different meanings that that word could have. Something fun about Middle English is that a word can have many different meanings, depending on the context it's used or when the text was written. So that's a very useful resource for me. Also, the University of York has a very good searchable archive of romances where you can search many different texts by themes or things that happen in them or by characters. I will link that down below. And also the University of Rochester has a lot of romances in their website, free to read. And all three of the romances I talked about today are in their website, so all the links are below. So I hope that at least one of these romances interests you and that you will go out and read them. And if you're starting reading Middle English, I hope that this was helpful and you will know where to begin. And please let me know if you read any of these texts. I think they're amazing and great fun. So I hope you have a good read. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.